Okay, so I've already shown that a charge moving in a constant magnetic field will make a circular path. But I want to actually model that motion and not just calculate it. So we need to do a little work before we build our model and we can visualize this. It's going to be great. Trust me, it will be really great. So the first thing we need to know is if we have a charge in a constant magnetic field B, uh, and it has a, a charge Q and a velocity V, then it will have a force on it, F equals Q V cross B, where this is the cross product. So uh, I made this little uh, thing to remind us. If that's the direction of QV and that's the direction of B, then that's the direction of the force. So in this case, I'd have QV, I'd have uh, B going down, it's going into the paper, that's why it has the X's, and then the force be to the side. And then no matter where it goes, it's always going to be a sideways force, which makes it move in a circle. But I want to show that it happens organically. Well, kind of organically. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to calculate, we're going to set up this situation. We'll have some, I'll have a proton, and I'll make a magnetic field, and then I'll give it some initial velocity. And then, uh, I will calculate this force. I can do that. If I know the vector value of the magnetic field, and in this case, I'm going to say this is the x direction, this is the y direction, and this is the z direction. So coming out of the paper like that. Uh, so I'm going to have a magnetic field in the negative z direction and a velocity in the initial velocity in the y direction. So it's going to be a proton. I'll give it some velocity. I'll use some magnetic field. It doesn't really matter what values it will be, and that's fine. But now, if that's the only force acting on it, then we have the following. F net is the change in momentum over the change in time, where momentum is mass times velocity, if the thing's moving slow, I mean, not near the speed of light. So this should be fine to, uh, to use this uh, definition of velocity. If I solve this, I can write this as the following. F net delta t equals p2 minus p1. That's the change in momentum. I have to multiply both sides by delta t. I can add p1 to both sides, and I get this. p2 equals p1 plus f. We only have one force, delta t. So if I, the problem is that I can't just get a simple equation of motion without doing some tricks because the force changes direction. And so if I take a small time step, delta t is small. And small is a relative term. But if that's the case, then I can calculate the change momentum over that small time interval, assuming the force is constant, which it's not. But if my time interval is small enough, this is good enough to work. Okay, So I'm going to calculate the force using this. And I'll use that to find the momentum after a short time interval. Once I know the momentum, I can do the same thing with the average velocity. V average is the change in position over the change in time. That's a vector. And then I can say R2 equals R1 plus V average, which is just going to be the momentum over the mass times delta T. So let's go through these steps. Set everything up with initial conditions, initial velocity, initial position calculate the force. With that force, find the new momentum after a short time interval. With that momentum, find the new position after that short time interval. And then go back up here and recalculate the force, recalculate the new momentum, recalculate the new position, and just keep doing this until I get bored, the computer blows up, or whatever. But yes, I'm going to use a computer because if I want to model, if I have delta t of 0 0.01 seconds, and I want to do one second of time, that would take 100 loops. I'd have to do these three things 100 times. That's 300 calculations. They're easy calculations, but I don't want to do it. OK, so I'm going to do this in Python. And I'm going to move over there, wherever your my computer is. And I'll see you in just a second.